Before the break, I told you about the right wing's insidious and coordinated campaign to oust Harvard's first black president, Claudine Gay. For more on this, I am joined by two distinct individuals uh, who are important to this conversation. They are both academics at Ivy League universities. Eddie Glaude, Jr. is the chair of the African American Studies Department at Princeton University. Jelani Cobb is a staff writer at The New Yorker, but he's the dean of the Columbia Journalism School. Both men are MSNBC political analysts. It's an important conversation, so I really appreciate the time that you've taken. Um, Eddie, this is a it's a complicated issue, and there are many things that are complicated about it. And I just had a great conversation with Asaf Zamir, a uh, former Israeli consul, about anti-Semitism, which is a real issue that has to be discussed on, on American campuses. But that's not actually what this was. This was something else. Absolutely. First, let me just say, I stepped down as chair. Tara Hunter is now the new chair of African American Studies, and I want to give her her props. Thank you. Uh, but I, 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 would, I would like to say this, though. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the assault on uh, on Claudine Gay, on Liz McGill, and Sarah, uh, and Sally Cornbuth is a part of this overall kind of description of, of everyday ordinary colleges and universities, but more specifically elite universities, as these bastions of illiberalism, as these places where left wing orthodoxies corrupting the minds of children of our children, and it's at the heart of that claim that then wokeism alley is the heart as at the, is the source of the critique of the state of Israel. Israel gets read as a settler colonial society engaged in oppression of Palestinians because these students have been indoctrinated by left-wing professors who believe in wokeism. And I want to just suggest to you that that is just simply a translation of an old argument. We've been dealing with this kind of characterization of, of, of universities and colleges since the 80s and before, even since the Vietnam War, right? And they're just changing their changing the names, giving us a new vocabulary. So this is much bigger than just Claudine Gay's presidency. This is much bigger than Penn and, and Cornell. It's about a wholesale attack on colleges and universities across the country. Jelani, what's your take on this? Because not only do you deal with this as a, and by the way, Columbia is a, a real hotbed of, of this discussion about Israel-Palestine and liberalism, but you're actually a journalism dean. So you have to think about not just what it is, but how we actually uh, portray and tell the story. Sure. Um, and so I think there are a few things going on here. You know, one is that there is a complication. You know, that forum, you know, in Congress was not meant uh, to explore the nuance and complexities of uh, free speech on campus uh, or around, you know, standards and values and those sorts of things. Uh, you know, really, it was a show trial that was meant to humiliate uh, and ultimately remove uh, the three women, you know, who were who were called uh, to be uh, in that conversation. Now, there is a complicated conversation to be had about how you balance your values with academic freedom uh, and you know freedom of free speech. That's not what was happening there. Moreover, and I think Eddie can can relate to this. You know, he went to Morehouse when I was at Howard. Uh, we both uh, have kind of matriculated through our careers around the same time. We have seen time and again, uh, and our mentors, the people who prepared us to, to work in this arena, saw time and again the way that African Americans' credentials and qualifications are questioned. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, how distinguished you are. Doesn't matter what you've achieved uh, or what your laurels may be. But the presumption is that you don't belong in this arena. We're operating in an arena that is where the primary criteria is your intellectual ability. And we're members of a community that has been denigrated, allegedly, stereotypically, for the lack thereof. That's a problem uh, in, in some. That's what we saw happen with Claudine Gay. The same thing that we saw happen with Barack Obama when they demanded his birth certificate. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's effectively what we saw happen with Christine uh, Gay uh, over the course of these clips these last, excuse me, Claudine Gay, over the past these uh, few months. Eddie, let's talk about that. Uh, I was having a great conversation with Nicole Hannah-Jones the other night, and, and one of the things mm -hmm. that happens in long uh, dissertations, uh, mistakes happen, citation mistakes happen, and mm -hmm. universities actually are very specific about the difference between you've got citation errors and you plagiarized, you represented some, I mean, it's, it's, uh, they have a range of things that happen. Harvard did investigate this. Harvard's an important institution. Harvard said, that's not what you say. She didn't take anybody's ideas as their own. In fact, the main person whose ideas it was suggested she didn't uh, account for himself said he didn't think that was plagiarism. Right. Now Bill Ackman's got a different problem on his hands. Uh, his wife is uh, alleged to have done the same thing. And he offered great grace to his wife. He said, she makes mistakes. She's only human. Claudine Gay was not entitled to that. 
Right. I mean, we can whatever Bill Ackman's motivations may be, um, we can we can pass judgment. I think it's really important for us to understand uh, that when scholars are engaged in their research, particularly at the level of writing a book uh, alley or books, we're dealing with 200, 300, sometimes 400 sources, especially historians. Jelani can tell you this. Right. And, and you make mistakes as part of what it means to be a human being in this regard. So, you know, and particularly those of us who worked before, before we had the, the software that will allow us to do the work. Imagine those of us who were working on first gen Apple computers or before that, just simply word processors or before that typewriters. And then imagine how T.S. Eliot would survive. Remember T.S. Eliot's former thing? The bad poet imitates, the great poet steals. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Eliot has to be thrown out. So part of what we have to do is to understand our space and then to understand what's motivating these folk. And I think if we understand what's motivating these folk, we see it as part and parcel of this wholesale attack on this diverse nation, on the on the value of diversity, right? And and, and if we don't, if we don't, let me say it this way, let me put it this way really quickly, Alex. We we all too often attribute good faith to these claims. And when we do, we find ourselves trapped, when in fact it's bad faith that's motivating it from the beginning. Jelani Cobb, as you mentioned, those hearings were not what they were advertised to be. There is really an important conversation to discuss how universities keep people physically safe sure. and intellectually not so safe, right? That's that's where we should be. And there's a valid discussion to be had. But as I think I heard Eddie say some weeks ago on TV, we have deliberate. Some people have deliberately confused that discussion. They have confused the discussion of uh, diversity uh, and, and CRT, which most people who talk about don't know what it is, uh, with with freedom of expression and ideas. How, how do we unmuddle this? Well, I mean, I think that Eddie's point earlier about good faith and bad faith is crucial here, that you can only unmuddle it if you're dealing with people who are having this argument in good faith. Uh, For the people who Rufo mentioned, their agenda was to remove Claudine Gay. Uh, You know, there's no unmuddling that unless unless it's just to be clear that that's what's happening here. Uh, There's one other thing. There's one other thing that I think is important, which I've seen, you know, a few people, you know, Brett Stevens and a number of other people uh, make this claim about Claudine Gay, saying that her uh, intellectual uh, output was was thin. Uh, She'd been published in all of the top journals in her field. And so these these definitions for what intellectual output and standards are vary widely uh, from discipline to discipline. Some disciplines like economics, very much focused on papers, uh, where it's fine to have multiple authors and multiple uh, people collaborating on something. Other places like history, it's more frowned upon, and people are more inclined toward books than papers, necessarily. It varies across fields. But when you compare her within her field to people who are top scholars in her field, she stands equitably. Uh, and so the reason that this argument could even be made was that we were seeing the same sort of delegitimization that we saw yeah. going back to Barack Obama, going back to every single uh, peer that I could talk to uh, who's a person of color or a yeah. woman who can tell you about some circumstance in which their uh, intellectual abilities have been questioned on the basis of their identity. Guys, lots more to discuss on this. I'm out of time, unfortunately, but thank you so much for your time and your work. Jelani Cobb and Eddie Glaude, Jr.